four part, part one, part two, part three, and part four. Now look at part one. Part one. Course information. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Hello. I wonder if you could help me. I am interested in enrolling in your MBA program. Could you give me some information, please? Yes, of course. I'll take a few details first of all, and I'll give you a copy of our prospectus. Oh, that's okay. I already have one here. I've been researching the MBA courses in the local area, so I already have lots of course information. That's great. Okay. So first of all, can you tell me your name, please? Yes, of course. It's Anne Horbury. Horbury is that H A W B E R R Y? Yes, that's right. Okay, and what's your date of birth, Miss Horbury? The twenty second of May, nineteen eighty one. That's great. And you were born in the UK? Yes, I was. All right. Can you give me some contact details, please? Sure. My address is twenty six Simon Place in Brighton. And my telephone number is o one nine o three seven one four seven two one. Sorry, can you tell me your contact number once again? Yes, it's o one nine o three seven one four seven two one. Okay, great. And do you have a mobile phone number? No, I don't. Is it important? No, that's okay. I'll just write it on your form. No mobile phone. Now, just a few additional questions. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen and answer questions six to ten. Are you working or studying anywhere else at the moment? Yes, I'm working for Lloyd Enterprise in the city as a secretary, and I'm also attending a computer course part time in the evenings. Great. So, can you give me some details about your educational background? We need to make sure that your qualifications match the entry requirements. Yes. I completed a business degree a year ago. I've been working since my graduation, but the job market is very competitive these days. So I'd like to do some postgraduate study now. Okay, that sounds fine. Your degree is relevant, and it's good that you have some work experience too. I do need to warn you, though, that our MBA program is extremely popular and gets full quickly. So, would you be interested in applying for any alternative courses if your application is not successful this time? Well, my first choice would, of course, be the MBA. But yes, I've had a good look through your prospectus, and I would also be interested in the international marketing course. That's great. It's always a good idea to keep your options open just in case. Finally, can you tell me where you learned about our courses here? Actually, my cousin studied the MBA course two years ago, and she recommended it to me. Okay, well, thank you for coming in today. I will pass your details on to our admissions department. They should contact you this week with a formal application form, and they usually invite MBA candidates to come in for an interview. Okay, well, thanks for your time. No problem. Good luck with your application. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Part two. 
you will hear a tour of a newly renovated health club. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. As you listen to the first part of the talk, answer questions 11 to 15. Thank you all for coming to see the new renovations to the Hartford Health Club. I know you'll be as pleased as I am to see the wonderful results of our months of hard work to improve the club and bring you the best facilities ever. We'll begin in here with the swimming pool. You'll notice the new colour of the adult pool, a lovely cool green. Now walk over here and look at the children's pool. It's the same green, but as you see, with brightly coloured sea creatures painted everywhere. Both of the pools needed painting, not only for maintenance, but I think the new colour greatly improves the atmosphere of this part of the club. Next, let's take a look at the locker rooms. Don't worry, there's no one using them just now. Doesn't it feel roomy in here? We've expanded both the men's and women's locker rooms, so now they'll be much more comfortable to use. There are bigger lockers, a good deal more room in the dressing area, and more places to store extra towels and equipment. Be careful as you walk through here. The floor's just been polished and may be a bit slippery. Let's go up to the exercise room next. Here, you'll notice a new floor. Walk on it. Doesn't that feel comfortable? It's a special material, softer than the old floor, an ideal surface for jogging and exercising. They had to move all the exercise equipment out while they were working on the floor, but don't worry, it will be brought back in before the end of today. Let's step outside now and look at the tennis courts. We haven't done a great deal here except to the equipment. We replaced all the nets and the ball throwing machine, otherwise everything is the same as it was before. Let's walk down this hallway and here we are at the club store in its new location. We thought here by the entrance was a better place for it than where it used to be by the swimming pool. But it still has all the same items for sale, sports equipment and clothes in the club colours. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. We're excited about the upcoming activities and events to take place in our newly renovated club. Now that the pools are ready for use again, swimming lessons will begin tomorrow for both adults and children. If you haven't signed up yet, you can stop by the office before you leave today and put your name on the list. If you're a tennis player, you'll be interested to hear about the tennis competition coming up on Wednesday. Players from different clubs all over the region will be participating. If you'd like to watch the event, tickets are available in the office. Also, I want to be sure you all know you're invited to our club party coming up next weekend. We're celebrating the completion of the renovation work and we have a lot to celebrate. The entire renovation project was finished in just nine months. That's three months less than the 12 months we'd originally planned on. We're proud of that and proud that we came in under budget too. Because we've had such good results with this project, we're already planning the next one. We already have two indoor pools, and next year we plan to install an outdoor pool right next to the tennis courts. Details of these plans will be made available to all club members soon. All right, I think we've covered just about everything. Are there any questions? That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Section three. You are going to listen to a conversation between two students talking about a lecture they have just attended. First, look at questions twenty-one to twenty-four. There are four alternative answers: A, B, C, and D for each question. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer, and circle the appropriate letter. Henry, don't you think Dr. Adams' lecture was really very good? He could talk about the telephone directory and make it interesting. All his lectures are like that, Astrid. He's just one of those people. I wish we had him as our tutor. I bet you that he is very demanding, though. Boris is in his tutorial group and agrees that he is a brilliant lecturer, but he puts them under a lot of pressure. Hmm. But don't you think that's good? Perhaps. But I am glad to have Dr. Adams as a lecturer. He's interesting and rather funny, and puts just the right amount of pressure on people. Did you take lots of notes in the lecture? Yes, actually, I did. In fact, several pages. I didn't think I had taken so many. I was that busy listening to what was being said that I didn't take many notes. Can I photocopy yours? I don't think that's such a good idea. You won't be able to read my handwriting, and sometimes I write them in English and sometimes in Arabic. Oh, let's have a look. Wow. Your notes are so neat. There's not much Arabic. There is on this page. Oh yes, there is. Doctor Adams would be pleased to see this, especially given what he was talking about. Don't you keep careful notes?、Mm, sometimes. It depends on the lecture. I don't think I'll forget Adams's lecture today, but some of the detail will fade. Before the conversation continues, look at questions twenty-five to thirty. I type up everything afterwards, so you can have a copy then, and you can fill in anything I have missed. I'm not so good on the broader concepts. I'm better when it comes to detail. Just what Adams was talking about. Well, I am definitely a detail person. I need to have everything written down before、As、I can get the concepts clear. As you listen to the next part of the conversation, and right, I no am the complete opposite. For questions twenty-five to twenty-seven, I find all the detail mind, and I get and very frustrated. And for questions twenty-eight to thirty, which was just what he was on about, no more than two he mentioned words a book he'd for、written. each answer. He mentioned several. The one on space and the individual. Yes, called My Space. It's on the book list. So it is. I think I'll get that out of the library or, or get my own copy. Did you get what he said about spatial awareness? I didn't really.、Oh, yes, it was fascinating. I can't be as eloquent as Adams was, but I know several people who are frighteningly intelligent. But they have difficulty reading simple directions, even when getting to places that they know very well. I find that difficult to understand. Everyone learns the way to walk to the shops and things like that. You mean just the way people learn spelling? You know, people misspell words, make mistakes in countless areas of their lives, and going in the right direction is just the same. Remember what Adam said about the number of people who cannot tell left from right, north from south, and so on. Do you know which way is north? It's、um, that way. You see, 
I couldn't have told you that. Really? I haven't a clue which way is which. That's why I'm always getting lost when I go out on my bike and put me in a completely new place, and I am totally lost. What about maps? I'm hopeless at reading them. But then you're brilliant at writing essays and getting all the ideas down in the right order, and I don't know where to start. Again, just what Adams was talking about. What we need to do is combine our skills. You teach me to cope with detail, and I'll teach you how to string concepts together. Okay, we can do that. Which way is the library? It's.、Uh, you're making fun of me. <laughs> That's the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. Listen to the last part of the lecture. As you listen, complete the notes below. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Last time, I said that a lot of Irish people left the country and went to England, America, and many other foreign countries. Today, I'd like to talk about the emigration. The effects of emigration were not all bad. The immigrants experienced a lot of hardship in their new countries. There is a famous story about a park in Shanghai, where. Chinese and dogs were not allowed. Well, in England, until into the 1950s, signs for jobs sometimes read "Irish need not apply." The immigrants often experienced discrimination, but they formed many organisations to look after their fellow immigrants. Many of these organisations later became very important. In America, the Irish chose politics as the way forward, and significant cities. Were controlled by Irish politicians. This movement reached its peak with the election of John F. Kennedy in 1960. His grandparents came from Ireland, and his election had a significant impact in Ireland, helping the process of recovery of self-confidence, which we have today. Today, there are 70 million people of Irish descent living outside Ireland. In America alone, there are 40 million people. And 10 million of these people have a hundred percent Irish background. They carried the culture of their home country with them and adapted it to their new home. They made changes which would be unthinkable in the home country, and we often laughed at the Yankees' Irishness. In fact, any immigrant who came back to live in Ireland, often after many years, found it very difficult to fit into Irish society again. They had been changed by the experience. These immigrants have always had an interest in the old country. The American letter was a letter containing dollars sent back to one's family. More recently, President Clinton has been very influential in bringing peace to the north of Ireland. River dance itself was the idea of a dancer who is American who applied American methods to traditional dancing, and the fusion was immediately popular. Modern Ireland has been able to use the disaster of the last century to learn modern marketing techniques and apply them, without at the same time losing what is distinctive about itself. River dance is a demonstration of that distinctiveness. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.